Dear friends in Christ, welcome to the last day of August, and it is Wednesday of the 22nd week in the ordinary time, year two. Preaching the good news is a task that we are all called to do. By the fact of our baptism, we become priests, kings, and prophets with Christ. We share in these offices, which rightly belongs to him. There are different modes by which we accomplish these tasks, since we do not possess the gifts in the same way and measure. There are those who are dedicated particularly to the ministry of preaching. There are those who preach by the support. They are called those who are on mission. In the first reading of today, taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9, Paul berated those who were seeking self-interest at the expense of preaching the gospel. Such people create confusion in the flock and make men into idols to follow rather than the message that they preach. Paul calls such people infants in Christ, men of the flesh. He says, For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving like ordinary men? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely men? People often belong to the cult of certain leaders. They follow particular persons and not the message of Christ. By that, they run the risk of falling like a pack of cards with the person. Paul planted, Apollos watered, the growth comes from the grace of God. No matter how important a preacher may be, the message is more important. It is not his word, but that of God. It is the word of God that must therefore pre prevail. As Paul concludes, for we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. In the gospel, taken from Luke chapter 4, verses 38 to 44, Jesus shows us how to do the work of God. Jesus had worked a miracle in Simon's house by healing the mother-in-law. Simon, will later be entrusted with the guardianship of the faith. Once the woman received her healing, she immediately got back to work. She began to serve them. That was her own way of preaching the good news. She may not directly go on mission, but she supported those who went on mission. Jesus also, for the second day running, casted out demons that were claiming knowledge of him. Early next morning, he went away to a lonely place to pray, and the people came with the aim of keeping him with them. He, however, said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. This is what Jesus wants of his followers to, never to be attached to a particular place or certain followers. To be ready to carry the message everywhere. The crowd does not belong to the preacher. If he truly preaches Christ and his good news, someone plants the faith and other waters it, but it takes the grace of God to make sense of their efforts. For those who support the mission as well, they must not also be limited in their support to one or only a particular person whom they fancy. Your support is for the mission of Christ and not the preacher. There are those who seek their own good and glory at the expense of the mission they have received. The child of God must be wise and not supporting something that does not glorify God. Let us pray. Lord, here I am, send me. Help me also to support those who bear authentic witness to your presence in the world. Amen.
May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>